Hey everyone, it is Mike, the Dad Nerd here. I am really excited you are watching this video because if you're watching this video, that means maybe you got a new smoker and you're ready to do your first smoke, or maybe you've just never done a pork butt before and you're looking for a great starter recipe. So this video is intended for you beginners out there. Uh, maybe, like I said, you've got a smoker, you're ready to do your first smoke, but you've never smoked any meat before. So what I'm gonna give you guys today is an extremely easy recipe to make amazing pulled pork. It'll taste great. This is one of those meals that you can cook for the first time and you can wow your party guests. So if you got people coming over for a football game or maybe 4th of July, whatever they're coming over for, and you wanna make an amazing meal that serves a lot of people, and honestly, it's pretty affordable way to feed a lot of people, this is gonna be the recipe for you. All right, so when we're looking at doing pulled pork, it's a pretty simple recipe. First of all, you need to start off with a great piece of protein here. So we got a pork butt um, that we just got from the local grocery store. It doesn't need to be anything fancy. I think this one was about $16, uh, maybe about eight and a half pounds, nine pounds. And uh, it's, a, it's all you need, really, to start. Now, you can make a lot of stuff from pulled pork. So whatever you wanna do on the side, whether you're making sandwiches, tacos, quesadillas, you can really make anything. So I'll leave that part up to you. But to actually make the pork butt, all we need to do this whole process is the pork butt itself. We need some mustard, which is actually gonna act as our binding agent. And then you're gonna need, obviously, your favorite rub, whatever you wanna do. So I would go to your grocery store, or even better, if you have a local barbecue joint. Here in Omaha, we have The Hub helping you barbecue, which is a place I love to go. Very highly trained barbecue pit masters there that'll give you some great recommendations on some rubs. So today I'm using uh, the Cimarron Dax gourmet barbecue seasoning. I can use this on pretty much everything and it tastes amazing. So you got your rub, you got your binding agent. I would recommend having some paper towels nearby, helps with cleanup, and I would also wear some gloves. It also helps when you're, when you're getting the rub in there, it just helps to peel these off and be done with it. The only other two things you're gonna need for the smoke is obviously the smoker, and we'll get to that in a little bit when we take this thing out to actually put on the smoker. But the main thing here is you're gonna need some sort of instant thermometer. Now I have two. The way I do it, and we'll get into this later as well, is why this uh, meter is amazing. So this is the meter, M-E-A-T-E-R plus. This device is awesome because this is a therm thermometer that you're gonna put in your meat, and it's gonna stay in there throughout the entire cook, and it's wireless. It connects to your phone or your iPad, so you can monitor your cook when you're away from home. If you're in the house, you can monitor it the entire time. Comes with an amazing app. Again, we'll get to this in a second, but you don't need something this fancy. But again, links to all this stuff that we use today is gonna be down in the description below, so check that out if you want links and you wanna find the stuff I'm using. Um, but really all you need is an instant thermometer. So this is the one you can just pick up at a store, anywhere, super cheap, instant thermometer. When you're smoking, if this is your first time doing a smoke, you're smoking for temperature. So that was a big change for me when I got used to cooking. Um, as you get better, you can start to do it by feel and by look a little bit. But when you're first starting out, I highly recommend just cook by temperature. It's a foolproof way. You know what you're getting yourself into until you start to know what you're looking for and what you're feeling for. Uh, when you're doing some of these smokes, I would cook by temperature. So that's what we're going to do today to get you guys started out. So the first step in preparing our pork butt to go on the smoker is actually to get it rubbed down with our binding agent. And today we're using mustard. Now the first time that I did a pork butt and I saw someone recommend mustard as the binding agent, that's really weird. I don't know how that's gonna taste. It's gonna be interesting. You won't taste it, I promise. This simply helps our rub adhere to our meat and stick to it a lot better. So all you're gonna do is you're just gonna give it a drizzle. You don't need much. Just a little drizzle all over. And then we'll get the sides too, don't worry. I also recommend during this, if you have it or if you wanna get one, one of these large cutting boards really helps out um, for all the barbecuing you are gonna do. I use it all the time. I use it to prep, then I'll clean it while it's, uh, the stuff's on the smoker, and then I'll use it to slice as well. A nice big cutting board is huge when it comes to barbecuing. So you wanna make sure you get all your sides here. So you may need some more. I would designate one mustard bottle for barbecuing because it ends up being a mess, as you see, as you start to grab it. And uh, that thing is now soaked in mustard. But make sure you get everywhere. Now there's some debate. People like to put it on the bottom, on the fat side. This fat is gonna render away when we smoke this, so it's not gonna stick. So you're not actually gonna have any bark on this side because this whole fat is gonna render away. I like to still hit it with the rub, hit it with the mustard. Um, you don't need a lot but just to make sure it's fully covered, right? All the flavor, you can't go wrong with more flavor. 
All right. So now this is where I will usually either switch gloves or just get rid of the gloves because we do not need any more mustard. That's the messy part of this. So we'll actually throw all those away over here. We'll get our mustard out of the way. Thermometers we don't need at the moment. And this is where you want to shake on your rub. And feel free to be liberal with this stuff. Um, there's really no such thing as too much rub for it. But I start shake high so that it's a nice even coating all over. And what I like to do here is I kind of like to have to stick my hand to catch some of the extra and I'll actually pat it in as I go, especially because some of those sides can be hard. So I'll do the same thing on the back. Make sure all your sides are covered. You want a really good bark on your pork. Spin it around here. All right, so you can see that we have got this thing nice and rubbed down. The color has changed and it's okay. You'll start to notice that you'll see some extra rub on the top that hasn't really kind of absorbed in yet. That's okay because the next step of what we're gonna do, we're actually gonna put this in our refrigerator for a few hours. You can do it overnight. You can do it for a few hours. I suggest at least doing it for an hour. Kind of lets it sit there, absorb the rub a little bit, sit in that. Also gives you time to fire up your smoker and get it up to temp. But what we're going to do is we're actually going to put this in the fridge for a few hours. One of the pieces about cooking a pork, but is you really got to plan it out because what you're going to be doing here is you're going to set it and just let it ride. And the amount of time it takes to cook is different for every single pork butt. Uh, the general rule of thumb that you might be able to follow is that there is an hour per pound when you're cooking. Now I have found on my smoker with my meat, the way I like it, it's usually more than that. Um, for this cut of meat right here and for the weight, I'm expecting this to be about a 12 to 13 hour smoke. And so you really got to plan this out on when you start your smoke and you have a few options here. You can start super early in the morning. Some guys love to wake up at 5 a.m., get up, start the smoker, and that way it's done for dinner time. You could do a 12 hour smoke from five to five. Um, I really like to do it overnight though. I like to cook while I sleep. How awesome is that? You get to uh, have the meat cooking and preparing while you're sleeping. So that's what I usually do. So I'll usually throw it on maybe at 10 o'clock at night, nine, 10 o'clock. We'll probably start a little bit earlier today and get it on there. That way you can have it for lunch the next day. If you've got an early Saturday football game here in Nebraska when we have people over to watch the Cornhuskers, I love to have that 11 a.m. game, noon game. I love to have a nice pulled pork ready for lunch. And I like to not be worrying about it too much. I like to not rush it in the morning. So I like to give it a lot of time. So right now, we're gonna put this in the fridge and I will catch back up with you guys when we're ready to head outside and put it on the smoker. All right, so the hard part is definitely done. You have prepped your pork, but now is the easy part, right? Now is just the cooking. So what we've done is we are cooking today on the Green Mountain Grill, Jim Bowie. Love this smoker, it's been great for me. I've had it for years. And uh, so we've loaded it up with pellets. We're using the Pit Boss Competition Blend pellets. Loaded them up. Make sure you do use high quality pellets, I will say. Um, I did run into a problem a few years ago where I ran some low quality pellets through the grill. It kind of got clogged up a little bit. Ever since then, I've switched to high quality pellets. Pit Boss is a great brand. Uh, go to your local barbecue store. They'll be able to hook you up. But as soon as you get um, it started up, so we got this thing started. We started up just a little bit ago. We've got it rolling at 235. Now I set mine at 235 because I know, you know, these smokers fluctuate. Now I know my smoker. I know I need to set it about five to 10 degrees higher um, than what I want target. So target's about 225. We're going to set it and let it roll. So let's go ahead and get this thing on. We're going to open it up. Now you'll have to get to know your smoker a little bit. Each smoker, depending on where your hot box is down below, will have a kind of a, a little bit of a hotter zone, colder zone. I tend to put mine pretty close to right in the middle. I think I've got mine pretty well zoned. So my heat should be pretty even. So let's go ahead and let's put it on the smoker and then we'll put in the meter thermometer and I'll show you guys the app and how that works as well. But let's get this on the smoker. All right, so we've got the pork butt on the smoker, and now is the time to let you know that there is one cardinal rule 
and smoking. And it's, if you're looking, you ain't cooking. So do not lift that top up. Leave that closed. Let that thing sit. Don't be checking on it a bunch. You don't need to, especially with a pork butt. Maybe with some other smokes, you might need to check on it a little bit more, but not with a pork butt. So don't even open that lid for the next four to five hours. Unless you have a really, really small pork butt you're doing, you don't even need to check it. And that's what the thermometer is for as well. But our target temperature for today's cook is about 202, 203 degrees. That's where I like it. Some some guys will tell you a little bit lower than that, maybe 198, 199. For me and my family, I know that when we pull it off at 203, it is going to be perfect. Now, one thing to keep in mind is that you are going to hit a stall, and a stall in the meat is where it will sit at one temperature for a few hours, and you'll think that something's wrong. Maybe you'll think your, your uh, thermometer's wrong, your meter's wrong, whatever it is. That is completely normal, just so you know, and that usually happens around 160 and 165 degrees. So when you hit that, don't be surprised when it stays at that temperature for a few hours. You'll see a steady climb and then a stall point, and essentially it's almost like a sweat stage for that meat, and it's just leveling out the, uh, the moisture in there. So don't be alarmed. That will happen. Essentially, right now, you are going to let this thing ride until it gets to 203. So if you have something like the meter thermometer, check this out. So this is the app that I'm looking at. And you can see that the uh, internal temperature versus ambient, obviously I just opened up the smoker so it lost a lot of the heat. So ambient right now is about 109 and it's gonna come back up. I have noticed with the meter that ambient temperature can be a little bit off, especially early in the cook when that end of that thermometer is right next to a cold piece of meat that's been in the refrigerator. So it can be off, so that'll levelize. But we can see that the internal temperature is about 39 degrees on that meat. So that internal temp is exactly what we are looking for to get to 203 degrees for the end of this cook. So with the meter app, I will actually tap to set up a cook. I'm doing pork, I'm doing a roast, and I'm doing a butt. And so I'm gonna set it to pulled, and it knows that my temperature, because it's what I always set it at, is 203 degrees. And we're gonna click start cook. We know how to insert the probe. And there we go, now this app is monitoring my entire cook. And what's really cool is that I have this iPad and I can have this iPad in the home and as long as the iPad is connected to Wi-Fi, I can actually have the same exact app on my phone and I can leave the house and be anywhere. As long as I have an internet connection, I can monitor. So I do this a lot when I have to work at the office throughout the day, I can set up my smoke in the morning, monitor it throughout the day at work. If I need to you know, go home for the lunch hour and do something, great, but usually I can just monitor it, make sure nothing's wrong, make sure we didn't lose power and the smoker has gone out or anything like that. But right now, all we're gonna do is we're gonna let this thing ride until it hits 203. Now this is the recipe that I like to use. There are a lot more complex ways to do this, but my whole point in this video is to give you guys a good starting point. So some of my cooks, I will lift the lid every once in a while and spritz it with apple juice. Sometimes some guys will wrap it when it gets to the two, like 180 degrees and let it finish wrapped. I don't, I let it ride completely open. I don't do anything. I do not touch the pork butt until it finishes. But that said, that's the fun part about smoking. It's like an art. So as you guys start to experiment, you can do the first one like this, do it easy, and then really start to experiment with what you like, what style you like. Do you like to do anything different with yours? And that's what makes smoking fun is, is you can just customize it and you can get it down to what you like best for your taste, for you, your friends, your family, whoever you're cooking for. So right now, we're gonna let this sit overnight. Obviously, I'm gonna monitor it with the meter app. Now, the one thing you will have to check and make sure is that you don't run out of pellets. So I know that uh, probably about the 10 hour mark, mine is going to run low on pellets. Mine does have an alarm on it and I can hear the alarm from inside. So it'll start to, it'll set off the alarm on the machine, on the smoker, and that alerts me I do need more pellets. So monitor your pellet usage and make sure the hopper is full. But besides that, we're gonna let it ride. So I will check back in with you guys in the morning once the thing's ready to come off the smoker. And I am already excited to have a great lunch tomorrow. All right, so it's been about 13 hours since we put this thing on last night, and it's been super, oh man, there's like the smells, like all day I was mowing outside this morning, and the smells have been driving me nuts. So it's been smelling really good. We know the temperature is perfect. It's right at that 203 mark, which is where I like to pull this thing off. So now it's time to pull it off. 
But here's the thing, it's not a meal time right now. We're gonna have this actually for dinner tonight, and this happens a lot. Most of the time when you're doing a long cook like this, especially because it's unpredictable, you're gonna be pulling it off before you're ready to eat. So what we're gonna do today is we're actually gonna load it into a cooler. So I'll show you guys how I do that, but we're gonna wrap it in tin foil first, then we're gonna put it in the cooler and wrap it in a towel, and that will keep it perfectly hot for hours. Um, I've done that even overnight, and it stayed perfectly hot, great for a meal. So let's go ahead and take a look at how it turned out here. Oh, that is beautiful. That's what you like to see. Got great bark on there. It looks amazing. So we're gonna pull this thing down. Now, when I pull mine off, you're gonna notice that there's a lot of fat that sticks to the grate, and that's fine. That's that bottom fat piece that we said was gonna render off. So that bottom might leave a little bit. Pull it right down there. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and tear our tin foil here. You only really need one layer of the tin foil, especially if you're putting it into the cooler. But you do wanna wrap it up real tight and make sure you do get a nice good seal there. All right, we've got two little helpers here who love to help with the barbecue. We're gonna put this in the cooler and we're gonna eat it later for dinner. Does that sound good? Mm -hmm. Did you have chocolate today? I can tell. All right, so put the towel in here. Put it in, wrap the towel around. Better to use a smaller cooler is what I have found. That way it keeps the heat in a little bit nicer. So now we're gonna take this inside, set it wherever we want, and uh, we'll pull this for dinner tonight. And I'll show you how we go ahead and pull that. Inside. All right, can you carry it in, big man? You carry it. <laughs> it's too heavy? All right, need dad's help? Yeah. All right, let's, let's do it together. Let's take it inside. Thanks. All right, final step, and this is the easy step, right? So we took it off, we had it in the cooler, and that was a couple hours ago, probably about five, six hours ago, we put it in this cooler. And uh, so we're gonna take it out now, and we're gonna get it pulled and ready. I think people are tonight, we're making a mix of things. We're gonna do sandwiches, we're gonna do maybe a quesadilla, some tacos, things like that. Uh, but right now we gotta get it pulled. So we're gonna take it out of our cooler. Ooh, and it, I can feel the heat. It gets really humid in there, and that towel, man, yeah, that is still hot to the touch even, even after six hours. So that cooler method works really well. You don't need a fancy cooler either. Um, any cooler will work. So what I like to do is I used to these tin foil little pans you can get at the supermarket. They're really cheap. It just makes it easy because you can pull it in the container you're gonna serve it in, and then even afterwards, you're gonna have some leftovers. Uh, this pork butt makes a lot of food. You can just keep the leftovers right in there, put some saran wrap or tin foil over top and you're good to go. All right, let's get opened up here. Oh yeah, look at all the juices. Keep those juices in there too. Let those juices just stay in there. The great part about smoking pulled pork compared to some people um, we'll do it in you know, a slow cooker or a crock pot, something like that, is it doesn't end up a lot really mushy, right? It's actually very, it's more of a dry meat once you do it that way, uh, which I like a lot better. Now, there's two ways to pull a pork butt. There is the traditional way, and this is probably the right way if you talk to uh, barbecue experts, it's to use the claws. When you do it with the claws, you're gonna get the really nice appearance of like that long, stringy, dry, pulled pork. Probably the way you're gonna get it if you go to a barbecue restaurant. The other way is just to put back on your meat gloves and almost just mash it up. Now we have small kids in the house, so actually I do use the mashup method. It gets it a little bit finer. Maybe it doesn't look as well for presentation, um, but if you're just doing it for, for your family or, or your friends, it kind of helps a little bit. It's not as big for your little kids. So there's a dad tip for you, specifically for you dads. Uh, my boys like it a lot better if it's not as long and stringy. So we'll actually start it with both methods so you can kind of see here. So Mrs. Uyghur Tech can come in with a camera and we can take a look. You can just grab these things however you want, whatever feels comfortable. And really, you just start to pull that apart and look at that. Now you're gonna have some fat pieces that you're gonna have to get rid of. So kind of look for those as you go and you can pull those out. I just pull them out and I set them to the side. Oh man, this is looking so good. So you are gonna have the bone, which should just slide right out and look at that. No meat sticking to the bone at all. That's a sign of a good cook when nothing's stuck to that bone. 
that just pulled right out super easy amazing the dogs love these by the way all right so you can see if you were to do the claw method all the way through look at that right there that's kind of what you're going to get you're going to get that stringy really good appearance if you did that on the entire pork butt and actually we can start that way i usually just keep one stationary and pull through with the other it's really all you need to do and you can go both ways with it and if you run into a fat piece just set that to the side you're not going to have too much fat in these that's the great way great part about pork is you won't have too much fat but you will so for example see we got this kind of gristly stuff over here and that's fine you're going to have that on, on every single cut just pull some of that out set it aside give that to the dog the dogs love it a little bit harder with your big gloves on you can just set some of that fat set that to the side a little bit of fat's fine but you don't want someone to bite into a nice pulled pork sandwich and have a big uh mouthful of fat that's not good and you really start to see when you start to pull it really how much food you get with an eight to nine pound pork butt you're filling this entire tray you're gonna be able to feed a whole family here a whole football party whatever you're doing oh look at that the dog already came for his little treat pd you want a piece you want to try it out sit all right let's try it out is that good do you approve <laughs> all right the dog approves oh man all right let's get let's get mrs dad nerd a piece look at that that's starting to look really really good and you can oh, see I'm the a fan of the burnt ends. go for that get that Beans crust guys. oh look at that so yum yum you got that crust on there that bark that they'll call it that's my favorite part as well so if you get a few big pieces of bark it's definitely okay to leave that in the tray and someone who loves it will go in there and snag that and another thing i'll mention is the color as you start to look through your meat you don't want too much pink a little bit of pink is fine um, on the edge but really when you get it to that 203 degrees if you come in here and zoom in mrs dad nerd uh, you'll see there's pink around the edges around here but a lot of it you want the main piece to be that nice white color around the outside you are going to have kind of that equivalent of a smoke ring little pinks on the end but not too much pink and that's really the difference between a 197 degree done temp and a 203 so if you do like a little bit more pink um, you can bump that down when you're done you could pull it off at 195 197 198 uh, but if you want it to look like this this is what that 203 degrees that i like well there you have it there is a nice easy beginner recipe hopefully if you got your first smoker this is not a daunting cook at all probably the easiest thing you can do and it's going to taste absolutely amazing i'm going to get my first my last little taste here before we conclude the video oh, i'm going to get a nice piece right there oh yeah mm. perfect so there you go guys that's it that is the easy pork butt hope you guys enjoyed it and i hope you guys learned something if you guys have any comments any tips even to me things you saw every barbecuer has their opinions definitely leave those down in the comments so i can read them and love it give your recipes down in the comments too and share this with a friend share this with that guy you know that just got his first smoker and needs a new recipe we're everywhere we're on facebook we're on instagram we're on twitter we're on youtube everywhere is the dad nerd super easy to find us search us there follow there um, on instagram and facebook we do some more behind the scenes in our story so if you want to see the behind the scenes of how this stuff is made when we're prepping it follow us on instagram and you can look in the stories and you can get some of that content as well i hope to see you guys next time stick around we'll have another video coming out next week and until then enjoy and eat good